Okay, today I'm going to show you how I intend to get a climbing orchid off a mount, put it onto a fresh mount because the one that I've got here is degrading. I'm also going to talk to you about how I planned this ahead of time, giving me an idea to accommodate a climber so that the roots don't turn aerial and frazzle out before they hit the mount. I have my new mount all set ready to go and you can see one hole but there are two. I think this is going to work beautifully but first we're going to have to get this gorgeous Oncidesa Sweet Sugar off her mount. I'm going to try and be gentle, don't want to rip her off but if I have to Woohoo! Plan B is already on the way. Now this orchid has already been misted several times, but step one, let's do it again. Let's see if by misting I can dislodge some of the roots that are attached to the mount that are still viable. Maybe I can pry them off, encourage them off with a little bit of help with a very, very thin knife. She can really do with another drink. It's nice and warm outside. Oh, what a beautiful sight. I love it. Very tempting not to go into the entire fiddling with this orchid, but yeah, we're gonna give it a go because ideally we want to save as many roots as possible, but get in there soon enough before the new roots get too long because we want those to be the ones that are gonna attach themselves to the new mount. So thank you for joining me on a beautiful sunny afternoon in Southern Spain. Let's get this started. Let's get this started. So after misting the orchid, if you're not convinced, do it again. <laughs> Even if it's just a little bit of stalling because there's always a little bit of trepidation going into a project like this. But the next step is to double check and see if there are any older ties around the orchid that you can get rid of. Otherwise, you will be fighting a battle that you're not going to win if the orchid has other ties attached to the older mount. But I don't see any. Next step, what you can do is to see, is she loose at all? <laughs> There's always hope, you know, even though you see roots attached, but are there any roots that are viable attached in the back that you would be compromising? Because if there aren't, you can actually cut off the back here, all the old dead roots. That'll make your life so, so much easier. Most of the roots that are attached are nestled in there. All lovely jubbly in there, if that would focus. There we go. So I'm going to start to work my way from back to front. There is a new root right here coming in and wanting to go down there. Important to get your bearings. So we'll try and be mindful of that. Okay, from back to front. Let's get rid of all the dead roots. I have no intention of using dead roots. Whoa. Slow down. Here we go. Oncidesa Sweet Sugar just taught me something. What looks dead could be alive. You see that brown root right there? The second one in the back that is dead. The first one was alive. So we'll just slow down a bit. Don't get ahead of ourselves so early into the project because this could be a little bit lengthy in real time. Of course, if it gets a little bit tedious, as I'm dislodging the orchid from the mount, I shall be editing out anything so that you don't have to watch me in any way, shape or form do this in real time. I have no intention of being here for hours, but you see this? This is why she has to come off. I almost dropped her this past winter. The intention is not to break the mount. I want to get the orchid off. This orchid came from Insa Orchids and ADD and he told me that this is birch wood. She's going on to cork on the new mount. But yeah, I almost dropped her and I thought, oh, this is such a beautiful mount. I don't want to do this, but I can't be risking the orchid shuffle in the winter, taking her in and out and come up against the fact that I would drop her. That would be terrible. Speed is essential during those shuffle months and I can't be, you know, missing the mark. It's a big risk. So do I have a root tip that is climbing through here? That's a really tiny one. I mean, you know, 
I don't like to see a root tip go by the wayside, but this might just be a little asking too much because it's growing through the piece of bark. And this is something that is a little bit cumbersome when you have to remove orchids from a mount. And yes, yes, ripping it off would be <clears throat> something like this with caution. Now I have to see what's going on on this side because there seems to be roots growing in there as well. So where they're coming from, I have no idea. Maybe they've already come off the orchid. But this is <laughs> looking a little bit easier than I thought. Unless, of course, I'm taking off good roots. And that's not so funny. So we've got a lot of sphagnum moss here, which we're going to get rid of. Just to give ourselves a better visual as well. So I've learned my lesson up there. I'm just going to cut off what I feel is soft. Do not get distracted by these. <laughs> I've dislodged this root right here all the way. So we've got some nice roots coming up here, same thing. Get the knife underneath. And yeah, I wanted to show this on camera because this is important. If anybody ever has any questions and thinks it's even worth the effort, I think it's always worth a try, at least. Because I had another format for this video in mind that would be a little bit more quick to the point, succinct, then I thought, no, how did she get it off the mount? You know, instead of talking you through it, I'll show you. And I'll also be able to point out mistakes I've made along the way without going, yes, well, and this, 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 and the other happened. Look at this gorgeousness right here. Let's be careful. You're coming in and out with this one. Fly, go away, for real. You see, I have a super duper thin knife. We're getting to her on time. Dun, dun, dun. Now let's make sure that we keep that same energy and not lose what we've just dislodged because there's a whole gaggle of something going on down here. And if we do lose that, like I say, oh well, we tried. And I'm watching root tips that are in the back here as well. So engaging chameleon eyes. So now I'm just looking to see where she's snagging the most. Because if we wanted to, right now could be the time in one fail swoop just to pull. Perfect. She's holding down in here. Sorry about the shadow. Now I'm just going to gently see what gives. This one. This one right here is holding us back. Oh, it's gooey in down in there. So it's a good thing. We're coming to give her a new home. It's a good thing. It's in the crevice right here. That's a tricky little crevice in there. If you're enjoying this video, please, would you give it a like? I would so appreciate it. While I fiddle around with the roots, you will hear an, oh, if something untoward happens. So if you're distracted by liking the video, don't worry, you won't miss a thing. I shall give you vocal cues. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed, oh my goodness, I would so appreciate your vote of confidence. Please subscribe to the channel. The support is so appreciated. Thank you so much for doing that while I continue fiddling around here. There we go. <sighs> it's all good fun, isn't it? This mount was gorgeous. It served the orchid really, really well. So thank you very much for that. But look. That's too easy. And now we can just have a little bit of a look-see. Do we want to remove anything? 
I'm not really here to clean out a root system. Checking for some pests. She's had her garlic alcohol treatment because there was also ants putting aphids all the way down into the new growths. So I really sprayed those out. And we have three new growths. So there's one here and two in the back. And this is my planning. This is what I'm going to show you now, what I was looking for in amount. So let's address that. Remember this orchid is a climber. So check out the mount in the cross section. Look at that. You see what I did there? We have a little bit of a canyon here and we have a bulge here. So the plan is to set the old part, the back end of the orchid down here so that everything that grows as a climber nestles up. First of all, the new roots that we have nestle up into this part and eventually I can then also bring the orchid down with some fishing line or some wire so that she continues to grow along this curvature. That is the plan. What I did do was prepare two holes, which are probably a little bit, no, they're okay to see. You can see one there and one there because all I'm going to do is feed wire through her. And the plan is that the wire itself and only the wire will hold her in place. If that isn't good enough, hey, fishing line to the rescue. I'm going to attempt using a recycled bit of wire first but I need it to be very straight so that I can feed it through the holes without any issues. And if that doesn't work, then I'm just gonna take a new piece of wire, but we'll try this first. Now, just to convince the wire, I want it to go through. So there it is, okie dokie. Here comes the practical part because up until now, all of this was theory, but it made very, very good sense to me because here comes the orchid. I'm not very worried about anything down here because when I spray her, all the water is going to pool down here. I can always at the end add hulp filter material. And also what you don't want to do is go all the way gung ho with any kind of material onto a mount until you haven't assessed and sussed out the situation. How is the mount going to behave? How quickly is it going to dry out? because the mount setup is of course a wet dry cycle. So keeping it too wet with too much sphagnum moss or something like that could potentially thwart your efforts of a wet dry cycle. Getting moss off a mount once the orchid is there is a little bit more difficult than putting moss on afterwards. And in doing so, whatever you do for humidity after the fact, if you need it, it won't rot out your mount It'll be on the surface and you can easily then either exchange it if you need to or just let it degrade and leave as is if that is your preference and if then the orchid is sustained enough with the humidity that she has. Because clearly now I'm in a super, super dry climate and even I am not intending to put any kind of humidity buffer at the base because I also want to learn how this mount and the orchid are going to live in harmony, hopefully. If I want to intervene, plenty of time to do that. Now is not the time. Now our focus, our emphasis is to get roots to grow onto the mount because if that happens pretty much, we are home and dry. I know, talking about humidity and saying home and dry. <laughs> but you see what I mean? You want longevity out of a mount so that you don't have to be ripping anything off so soon because everything is very stressful for an orchid. So I'm trying to feed my wire through. Of course, I made a bend now that's a little bit cumbersome. It's just the way it just worked out. Now you're gonna say, why didn't you just use fishing line? And I'm gonna tell you because I didn't wanna do the rappy, rappy, rappy thing. I want it to be, in Spanish we have a word saying sencillo, as in hardly noticeable, discreet. So now I'm going to find my other hole. 
and feed the wire in there. My fishing wire is my backup plan. Woohoo! I'm liking what I'm seeing. Doesn't mean she's secured though. Let me grab my wire down here and start to tighten things a little bit. I also am very mindful of the new roots in the back. And you may say, well, this is back to front. She's going to be so tight up against the mount. Orchids will find a way. Trust me, they will find a way to grow their new growths because again, this is a climber. I need the new growth to always be very close to the mount. If I had turned her around the opposite direction, then we would have new roots coming out, growing into the air. That is no bueno in my climate, and I would not recommend it for any other climate either. So let's turn her around. And let's just convince her to get into position. And let's not even tighten it because <laughs> result. Even though she's holding, we're just going to do a little bit of housekeeping in the back here. It doesn't appear to be necessary because another thing I did, I highly recommend drill a hole, the smallest hole that you can to match the size of your wire. So the actually the hole itself isn't also adding to any looseness of the orchid. You can see I didn't have to do this twisting off in the back. The orchid was just in place beautifully. And even in my very windy climate, I could have just left it like that. But you know what? It's just a tidier job to do it this way. And we're done. Not quite. Now we're done. Okay, you can see how I didn't pull tight enough. And you see where the wire is bent like that. That was not intentional, but the orchid is snug on the mount. I'm not going to fiddle around and try to straighten that out. It is what it is. She is holding on beautifully, and you can see her climbing habit has been accommodated. And new roots have no issues getting to the mount, and that's what we will be watching. All the roots that we saw, everything that is all tucked up in there, has an opportunity to follow the contours, come down and out. So just as a little reference, here's the branch that we peeled off. Can we put that down in there? Something like that. Just convince it that it has a new nook and cranny in there, like that. Maybe the next one will go in there as well, who knows? Something like that. Ah, let's just put all of them in there. Here's another branching. Maybe they'll find their way, maybe they won't. Now, this orchid lives with the angracoids because I'm also encouraging her direction of growth to come a little bit upward and outward. That's what I've been doing since she arrived in my collection. I never ever had her light influence come where the growths were. I always had her light influence come from the opposite direction. It worked for this growth and I shall continue to do that. So I'm going to put her in her place. Even though I could now hang her up, I'm going to leave her where she usually lives. It's working out well for the time being. Why change it? And there she lives. This is where she was before. This is where she will live now. High, high humidity in this deep south location, very close to my angracoids. The camera is positioned in the direction of light. So nothing has changed. <clears throat> we just tickled her feet a little bit. I bet she won't even notice. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I gave you some tips when it comes to how to mount a climbing orchid, all that fun stuff. It really is a doddle. Just plan ahead with the shape of your mount and your orchid and you are good to go. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.